Welcome back to map two of a best of three that, well, let's say it's a surprising result so far. Shrug pulled the first map against Evil Geniuses, which was Clubhouse, which was Evil Geniuses map. Yeah, no, it definitely was. And things so far, not actually looking good for Shrug right now. We're going to head into our second map. However, in is going to be a consulate. So... Uh, having a look at EG and their second half of the season so far, they lost to DZ 7-4 on Consular, and they lost to Luminosity Gaming 7-5 on Consular. So this is not a good map for EG at all. This is this has not been a good map, but from Shrug's side, they've only played Consular once, and that was in their very first playday of Challenger League against Rise, in which it ended up a draw at 6-6. Well, this time Shrug are going to be the ones that take Jackal off the board and you know i guess we'll see how eg want to take this because as you said it's historically not been a fantastic map for them on the recent swing of things and this is when they've got to be able to well got to try to pull out the stops because you've got to find a way to swing your way past a team like this if you're struggling and no offense to shrug but if you're struggling against a cl team that's already struggled at the minute statistically and then you're going to potentially be playing some big teams that have had much better seasons you kind of want to see that first half season EG. A few members of Shrug tweeting out as well just during the interim period of that saying that they didn't even want to play this game. They <laughs> just want to get this over with and they accidentally won the first map. So going into our second map here. Ooh, <laughs> wow. I think that's a target ban against Necrox and I think EG's ban of Capitao is a target ban against Cloudstruck because EG normally ban a Maestro. For their defense here and uh shrug haven't effectively they haven't really used my show effectively during their defense in fact a lot of the time my show was getting insta picked on like both sides so we'll have a look at what things are going to be going down to be console office and meeting room defense here to start with here i uh, shrug i'm gonna start with the defense and the <laughs> eg have definitely changed up their strategy a little bit because actually in the past they have banned nomad here on console well, one of the questions that I have that's immediately been answered by Flynn is Valkyrie. Now, I always generally say she's a very, very good ban on this map, as do a lot of teams, especially in the EU region. She's normally an insta ban on consulate. Big four flat walls mean that any kind of information run out game is, well, second to none. We also know Flynn is a very good Valk player, has the ability to get those cameras, and that information was a big part of their previous round. So might become a little bit of a nightmare as time goes on. It's going to force MVK, or, well, any member of EG, to play IQ every single round. I think also Shrug weren't quite expecting the IQ pick, potentially, and they've actually moved to a pulse here from Mexican as well. So interesting stick picks coming out here as well. I do like a bit of stick pick. I think that's a decent layer of strategy. And uh, we'll see how that is going to be going down. I think the big question mark here, though, is the Rook. It depends. I mean, on this top floor point, you can hold it quite aggressively against Long Desk. In fact, it's the mainly seen hold in EU is you kind of expect the admin push. You yep. take it with a long firefight across Long Desk and across the center sure. of the room, and you don't allow them to move around. In NA, from what we've seen, generally it's more consistently they try and take control of Yellow Side. They try and take control of Yellow Stairs. And it seems like this Rook is going to potentially play into the aggression that the amount of information it offers. So yes, Valkyrie, as I've already said, fantastic information up gets all the outside pulse as well this is the only map out of all of the entire rainbow play pool where if you go to the observer cam and go all the way to the top you get the entire map inside the top down view it's the only map that allows that and it plays well into pulse as you can see just from standing on one side he can get pretty much an entire push and feed that information to the rest of a team without really having to move side to side too far I think mainly the Rook is here for the impacts and like going for those aggressive rounds because he is playing downstairs with the Pulse and he should be able to play off of the info here. I think it's less about playing aggressively as you said and it's more about kind of just having impacts so you can just quick go for runouts. But Lion Charge already going to go off early on. So he's Shrug are now going to be like, oh, they did actually bring that Lion and they didn't stick pick it. Yep, and now they've got to see if they can find a way to make it work. In the meantime, Admin is being taken control of by EG as they crack open the long angle to be able to try and find a way across. The Nomad is going to be a big part of actually just trying to keep a bit of a beat on the control of this map because there's so many places to rotate, so many places to rotate quickly as well. You've got to be able to have some solidity. Not loading is going to slowly creep around the corner here with this big Alder and see if he can find someone that gets 
gets a little bit overzealous on the rotate, but so far, EG, as we said, they're a very good drone team, a very good information team, and now that they know that the pulse is below, they're gonna not waste some time. Rats is the first to be taken off the table, and the line is gonna double down on the push below as we find ourselves watching Necrox creak up to Connector, and otherwise, yeah, they're just trying to shut down the pulse with the IQ, getting his heartbeat, getting his information, and, well, being ready to blow his head out. This is great amount of info coming out from EG so far, and they should know that Mexican, of course, is down here, and it's pulsing them all out. He's actually gonna go for a C4 play right now, and he's actually gonna catch NVK! That's IQ off the board, what a mistake from NVK there, as the refrag should start to come through here sooner rather than later, and there we go, it is going to be sooner here, as Geo is gonna take Mexican off the board, but... Honestly, a very, very worthwhile trade. However, my show peeking out onto long desk is going to take it down. Flynn is going to trade it out, and that's the line down off the board. Flynn playing player he gets over here. Has no nitro, but it's not going to remain in any kind of way as Flynn is going to get taken down. It's all going to be down to Cloud Truck on the rook to try and bring this in. No impacts remaining and no life remaining as EG take round over one. Very well done to this. Well, it was a good amount of control, but their attacks was where we saw them at their best. They were able to drone, able to find all the plays, the positions, and then from then on close down, and Shrug's defense seemed a little bit separate at that point. Obviously, Pulse was kind of cut off completely down in the basement there, and it was just a matter of having the shoulder cover. Great bit of C4 to drop the IQ, who had all the information on the world and your positions, but in that point, you've also got another body there, and that's something that they do very, very well. In the meantime, I guess what we're trying to expect and hope a bit from Shrug is a little bit more of the kind of active combination. At the very beginning, we saw the double up of the Pulse and the Dock. We saw them having that potential duo ship across the map to get some control, get some information, get some bodies, but then it separated. Whatever happened, happened. They ended up on different places on the map, and EG was so good at being able to just get in between that, get in the middle, pick them off one at a time, and then, well, find themselves now just taking apart the point. Mm. I like the bulletproof from Mexican there, just in the corner of the circle desk, should be able to see a decent amount of the site, and he's also going to see all of the normal fun spots here on Consulate Lobby and Fresh Room Defense, which is a very interesting site for them to want to go to, and I think as well, just like looking at that last round, the big reason why I think Shrug lost table, a bit yeah, that was, there. Um, was a ghost. Halloween. I think that the main reason, like, Kind of going back to what we said on Clubhouse is if EG are allowed their entire utility setup and they're allowed like everything early on, then their execute is flawless. Yeah. And that, it's always the hard thing about it is, is how do you start taking this apart? Is this going to work? A spawn peak? And no, unfortunately the answer is no. Young takes a little bit of damage, but it's hard against the team that we know pre-places drones very well. It's hard against the team that is this active and aware. and. I think so far they've not been successful across the two maps that we've seen uh, and the rounds of picking a body apart before they get close, but they've been close. Yeah, no, they have definitely been close. And we'll have a look. Mexican is going to be playing this very aggressive angle up onto Advin to see what he can do here. Is NVK with the upside down repel waiting for the drones to come in and confirm he is indeed clear to jump in. But Mexican should be able to find him. Oh, almost just barely missing the shots here. And that seems to be the story for Mexican so far on this round. Well, setting themselves up and swinging in for another admin clear as they did so well previously. Almost a book out of EU's from <laughs> Asterix Empire's playbook there as it is their standard hold. And the Lion is going to double down and see if they can tie that in with some aggression. Necrox is playing just under the window and is concerned about the run out, but with Nomads in your hand and air jabs to control, that should be the biggest problem. The big change here is obviously the roam game. They've kind of left it a shoe and they're just going to try and shepherd enough space to be able to get in and get the diffuser down and, well, hopefully bait the Shrug players into their own firefights. But with the Valkyrie underneath with the C4, the potential of Mozzie doing the same thing against this window as it gets tossed and it gets blown, but it does not catch. The second E1D goes off and Cloudstruck is the first victim with Mexican finding the refrag. Yeah, MVK is going to try and push up onto Connect and see what he can do here. There's actually a lot of control right now for EG, and they could also repel up onto Console. Uh, that's exactly what Necrox is going to be doing. Nitro is going to grab, but it's going to miss. As in, no, MVK is going to move in and gets taken down by Wrath, but instantly does get traded himself by Necrox on the Console repel. So Shrug is going to find themselves in a 2v3 here, as Mexican and not loading are the only ones remaining. But with time on their side, actually, now ticking down, but EG do have that obsessed control into projecting. You can see how spread out they are as well to try and attack from multiple angles here. Geo completely cutting off the benches rotate as well as Necrox moving up onto the piano windows and seeing what he can do, waiting for the aggressive push. It looks like they're just about ready to go for their execute. The 
long fire fights from the big barrels left on the side of the defense are trying to just keep EG at arm's length. And this could be the turn as it we find them very separated. They've struggled and they're finally burning ADSs, getting the default cam down and going to try and stick the plant where they were spotted. At this point, the spots are still coming hot and fast and Mexican is taken down and out by the long cover on the backside. And there is the second as they just find their way in point. The baiting game that Shrug were trying to play there and trying to, as I said, hold EG away, unfortunately came to bite them back in the butt a little bit because they just couldn't find themselves grouped together. Great execute from EG as well. That's kind of like how you execute without smokes is you just cut off all the possible positions that Shrug can run at you from. They had Geo playing that long angle all the way from Visa to cut off the benches push, and then they had... Necrox playing very, very close by. Uh, also something to mention that I think that Necrox, when he was outside of console, he didn't go on that repel and he just stays down because, yeah, as you said, he is worried about that jump out. But the thing about the air jabs is they don't detonate if someone is in midair. They only detonate if they're on the floor. Yeah. So if Necrox had repelled earlier on and he got jumped out on, he probably would have lost the fight and then the air jab would have gone off. So you've got to be very, very wary. And that does show like how Necrox does know what's going on there and what he should do there so really really good players coming out already from eg shrug actually almost managed to bring it in but again they're letting eg get so much control so early on and we haven't seen them be too aggressive against them so attackers need to locate and that's it and bomb. this is the same kind of play pace that we saw them have before on the previous map and it's working in their favors so far but if they don't find a bit of the aggression when they swap to their attacks well, we could start to see Shrug bring some of these rounds back. Still setting themselves up with the, uh, well, three ACOGs at this point. Both French have shown up as well as the Maestro to try and hold some control. And they're going to set the mid-tier kind of reinforcements down. But it doesn't seem like they're throwing anything in terms of the information game that we've seen them bring so far in the Pulse and the Valk. Opting instead for a little bit of the portability that Amozzi offers alongside the... Well, steady and true gun and camera combination that the Maestro has been so consistent so far. Here is more spawn peeking, more attempts at some aggression, potentially just prepping the run out, uh, the run out here and seeing, I guess, if they can find anyone on their journey towards it. But, you know, this is the tactic that, well, they've decided to opt for pretty repeatedly. And there's the double down, seeing if they can find something. And oh, they do! Mo Digger is the one that suffers in and amongst that, even having all of the attention and the no and the wherewithal to see it coming, can't win against the dock. Remember, it's Mexican, not Mexicanot, and he is going to be able to take Mo Digger early off the board. You didn't like that one? I thought it was good. <laughs> I was safe from that. No, I'm glad you oh! did. <laughs> well, there's those jump outs we talked about before, and they're coming full and aggressive now. Geo finds two, and he's able to at least bring a bit of a balance back, but Raths is quick to swing that the other way. On the far side, they've just got to aggressively push in the point, and they've quickly realized that nobody is on this close side. So, well, well, apart from the mozzie who rotates Zach through a close hole, it's just down to the Thermite at this point, who does find it! A triple kill out of nowhere! Tests the crouch key. But with all oh the aggression, he suffered, he responded with more. Young is just insane. He's pulled off clutches like that before on the frag bite. The heavy support of Young brings it in for a triple kill and brings in the round to what looked like almost certainly an EG defeat. Because as I said before, I would love to see Shrug play this series a little bit more aggressively. And you can already see they brought three ACOGs to the board. And I think this is exactly what Shrug needs to do. They need to put numbers, or at least even numbers. And they need to be starting affecting this utility for EG. Because if they're allowed to use their setup, if they're allowed to put numbers up on the board, it's just going to go really, really badly for Shrug. They cannot play this passively. It is going to be another garage defense that was almost very, very successful. But Young just cannot be stopped on the fragment. Well, their three ACOGs worked in the previous round to the degree that they wanted it to. They were aggressive and repeatedly looking for more of those windows and more of those early picks. This time they played the bait and switch, gunned a bit of the Maestro, drew some attention to the bottom of yellow, and then from that point onwards, Attackers the prepared window was jumped out. And there was also the other prepared window as well that was utilized. And then they ended up actually rotating to another window. So they are keeping all of their options open in terms of how they can aggressively attack this map. And this is one of the things that we pointed out at the very beginning that this map plays into. Those big, big, long walls, long sides, not really anything else like this 
rectangle of, well, offices and vans, and it's so far playing in the favor of them in terms of respond to EG. Take some bullets, take some damage, take a body out with a throw out, but if you're throwing a life like that, hey, it might just come to fruition. Next skin again. It's, bomb peak. It's, it's been successful before, and we'll see exactly how successful it's going to be this time. But I think EG at this point have really got to be wisened up to the kind of very aggressive play they should expect from Shrug. We might see a lot slower play from EG here. They have got the Nomad still up on the board, of course. Mexican still playing very patiently. He's still convinced that someone is over there, and he will be correct in that. But no, he's going to move off before anything can happen there. Drones are going to take it off the board by Shrug. Flynn's back on his rolls. Well, it's slowed down a little bit for the moment, and I only say for the moment because, well, we saw how the previous round went, and I think it's only a matter of time before we find ourselves kicking the NOS on yet again. Opening up steadily against Windows and keeping an eye on any potential runouts that may happen again. They're making sure that they don't suffer the same fate as the first E1D pops off. And you can see them clear and charge on the opposite side of the building on the tops of your screen. They're making sure that this top floor is theirs. And then they're going to start to put pressure against the yellow side stairs. With an MVK of Ash leading the way, sees the first body but doesn't take the frag as they get taken out by Flynn. He's just going to rotate out a fair decision because he knows that EG are very good at collapsing and closing down. And well, Necrox is now above where he was, but he is in safety and has the ability to find a second flank. So if they just keep Flynn on Legion, they just keep winning rounds. It was the first time they won a defense round on Clubhouse is when Flynn was on Legion. So I think it's the play. I think this is the strategy they should be going for. Flynn almost instantly destroyed, but it's going to pick up an injury kill up here as well has been able to waste plenty of time up in anti-chamber. That's exactly the early pick that they needed. Wrath is going to play very aggressively here onto the visa stairs, but opting out of it just so far. But this is still a very spread out defense coming up from Shrug, but it should allow them to waste quite a lot of time. Yeah, they have obviously the bodies in piano, but Flynn is refusing to let their bodies stay warm-blooded. Taking as many out as possible and having Geo slowed by the Legion traps on the far side of stairs. Again, he's on half health at this point, but he's already taken out the Ash and the Sophia. There's still some utility on the board, but it's not quite the soft destruction they would want to get vertical, and they've only got 45 seconds, so the bodies are going to have to start peeling and peering down onto point. Happy Geo finds Cloudstruck and takes him out of the equation, and they've got the main wall of Garage open, but they still haven't got comfort on the top floor, and there's Flynn finding a third for the round. As Mexican gets it down to just Necrox versus a four stack and with 20 seconds on, unfortunately, can't replicate what Young did in the previous round. Yeah, Shrug just dominating that round, especially Flynn with a great early picks coming out and then they give him with a 3k lesion. It's just the way to go. I think, honestly, this, this is exactly what Shrug should be doing. They should be playing aggressively, they should be annoying on these rotates and it's a kind of shoot and dash and that's kind of what Flynn was doing throughout quite a lot of that round and he was able to kind of minimize all the control that EG was getting early on. I think this is exactly the way that Shrug should be playing the series right now, and I'm glad that it's starting to work for them a little bit more. Moving into round number five, though, I think that Shrug desperately need both of these rounds, or else they don't really stand a chance once he commands that attack. We'll have a look how that is going to be going down, but we've already seen now Shrug has found out the series that they found out the play that works for them, and that is putting Flynn on the leash. Sixth pick to a clash from the Alibi is an interesting decision. I guess we'll see where they do decide to put her. First time that she's generally been bought um, by, well, by obviously on this map so far, but second time we've seen her bought today. And I guess, you know, it's always a curious decision when you see Clash, especially on a map like this where she's lesser seen. Obviously, potentially going to use her to control either a side, but at the same time, what side do you choose? You're assuming that the windows on A point are going to be broken up, and probably the windows on the B point, you're assuming to suffer some pressure from admin lobby, and often you suffer it from yellow stairs as well. There's so many different angles and different attitudes to how you can break through here that you kind of have to work out the balance of where the walking mirror window goes and what guns you want to put behind it because for the first time they've opted to only bring one ACOG. Although, you know, I, I just think Flynn Legion, that's just the way forward. I, I will not be Is that caster words. bias? It's you, like but you're biased bias. for just the caster? Yes. Yeah, it okay. That that's way. fine. But already Mexican. That one ACOG that is remaining is already taken off the board. That early spawn peak not going well for him at all. 
And we're already getting to turn ourselves into 5v4 Ichi finding that early man advantage and they're just going to go for their normal push it looks like they're not too bothered about what's going on but Young now on the Havana should open up that kind of admin to project the take. Well they want to keep their slow and steady going as they've done it so well before but with a body off the table it's going to be a little bit tougher. Flynn is trying to find some early information on the windows with a gun that has so far been true in his hands is very fair to say but at that point when you're already one body off and you know eg are very good at trades they want to try and find a way to balance this man advantage faster than well they need to e1 d pops off but nothing really comes of it there's the immediate pressure and the spots coming out on the side of valkyrie and she's just going to opt to head out of there because as we said about this map there's so many windows so many cross angles and so many nightmare possibilities why throw your life away the decision they've done with the clash's admin office they're going to try and hold that down because as we've seen eg have been consistent on that so far and now eg are opting for a plan b quick movements and quick footprints are getting themselves on the lobby side they're getting the circle stairs covered and they're heading over the top potentially going to try and find themselves against the B point as Geo finds another, but Flynn brings one back to his favor. Yeah, 4v3, but EG don't really have as much control as otherwise they might be happy with. As E1D is going to go out, hold all the defenders in place for just a second. The Shrug just has so many Legion mines stacked up on the side of the admin side. It looks like EG mainly going for a console take now as they've moved everyone through onto the west side of the building. So Flynn still holding on to projector, however, as Cloud Shrug moves up and he's going to be able to retake yellow, it looks like, as we go MVK on the IQ is going to be able to move up the yellow. Lion is going to go out. That's going to stop anyone from peeking from behind the Clash more importantly as well. As EG rotate their entire push to try and deal with this Clash and Zofia charges are going to go out. Cloud Shrug takes a lot of damage but isn't going to go down just yet. And NVK is just taking huge amounts of damage. He can't get control of yellow. And if they can't get control of yellow, they cannot do that console take. Well, they're getting a little bit panicked now. Swinging the bodies up round, but Rast is there to answer and takes the Nomad out of the equation. They've got to generally just hard swing in onto the point itself because they cannot find a way to stop the Clash unless she does that. Charges them with the shield down and tries to get the kill. Rast is the only one left at this point. They hard swing and get the bodies on the point, get the diffuser down, and they completely let that slip through their fingers. Rast, an amazing game on the previous map and found bodies on this so far has found one. But... Unfortunately, there's so much more left to do. A couple of questions I have for the decision of the clash there. Yeah, that was... Uh, I, th I think it was kind of just high risk, high reward. Like, he knows he has to play aggressively here because he knows they're going to get console control anyway. So he knows he's going to have to try and... If he can get that kill to NVK, that will win in the round. But unfortunately, he wasn't able to do so. And as we push into round number six, things are looking desperate for Shrug and I know. They desperately needed those two rounds. If they can keep this round, I think they still keep them in the play. But if they lose at 5-1, I think we basically call the map over at that point. Like most teams would call the map over. But, you know, maybe maybe we'll see most successful from attack as well. I mean, there's still a lot of utility. Up. This line push has been pretty effective from EG so far. Well, after this, we do head to coastline as well, which is... As we said, if EG pull this off, it's a bit of a bit of battle kind of map, but it does play well into Shrug's history, at least, so they have that on their favor. In the meantime, Lion has been a pretty big staple of their rounds this time, and it's kind of keeping a control on some of the aggression that we've otherwise seen. Gonna bring the Clash back, as well as find Maestro's feet back inside the lineup. So another ACOG is back on the board, and I guess we'll see how they decide to keep the aggression, because yes, Mexican has been trying it every single round. Um, and it's worked once. It has worked once. They've been able to find the body and it's been the opening death only once in his defense, but sometimes it's just been the other ACOGs that suffer first. And I'm thinking of, you know, how they're going to keep this roll up. Maybe if they double the ACOG with the clash on that front door. Maybe if they find another way to lean into the leaning in that they want to do. There's just plan Bs, and I'm wondering if they might be able to try them on their final defense round here. True. We'll have a look and exactly what Shrug want to do here, but from then they seem pretty content with their lineup from last time. And honestly, you know, it, it was working for them at the start, but hopefully Mexican doesn't get spawn peaked, or well, reverse spawn peaked, you could say, this time. But uh, it's going to be loading this time, taking off the ball instantly. Well, the nice shots come out in chat, and now it's just a matter of, again, a kind of bit of a stare down with any and all of these windows, making sure that they don't suffer the same fate. NVK is wasting no time and pace with this Ash. Clash is currently upstairs by herself. 
holding into admin, and there is someone on the other opposite side that's rotating closer, but, you know, it shows just, well, they're still trying to work out how they want to play her and maybe just complete control of the top floor. Raths is ready to double up with the class. She's actually pulled off down to the bottom of service stairs and is just going to try and hold the information as she can and now try and hold the angle alongside, but with NVK coming closer and closer, it's going to be down to the Jaeger to respond from the rest of the top floor. <laughs> playing very aggressively off this connector window and see exactly what is going on downstairs. EG with plenty of work to do here still as Lion Charge is going to go out and they're just going to rush straight into sight and they're going to be the panicking as Young does go for the plan of the Diffuser NVK moving all the way up to take out Wrath as well as, in, as Young is planting down the Diffuser. Geo moves into benches, takes down Flynn and now all of a sudden it's all down to Mexican and Clashra to try and bring this in but this isn't looking good, you're in a post plant and the Lion is still up and I believe we're still one more Lion charge as well as Mexican desperately trying to deal out but not able to get the kill just yet and VK picks him up for free and it's all down to Cloud Show to do all the work in a 1v5 and Geo very very low, just bottom yellow here but the Diffuser is doing its work. Well, Clash, you found yourself with a lot of isolated time upstairs and unfortunately none of the time in the world now. As you walk down and try and zap, you're well aware it's a crossfire and a barbed wire and a whole mess of hellfire that you've got to go through with the flawless for the first time on this map <laughs> today. NVK. He's just been sprinting around the entire map, just picking up freebies where he could. I think he went from bottom yellow through benches, back up spiral, and went back through that way. He picks, he's just picking up kills all across the board. Him playing on Ash is doing the work here in that round, but yeah, things not looking too good for Shrug all of a sudden. 5-1, and this this round is going to just define how the rest of this uh, map is going to go down, because if yeah. they cannot win this round decisively, then it, I think it's just over. I think they, they can't bring in the map and we're going to be going to Coastline, but We'll have a look how it's going to be going down so far as we move to round number seven. It's going to be Shrug's first attack, but also EG's first defense. And despite the fact they banned Mira on club, they are going to be bringing Mira here. The thing about Mira on Consular is there's much better operators to ban normally. Yes, Mira can be a really good operator, and you can play her in fun ways on certain points, but mainly just this basement point, where you either put her towards the kind of central hold behind White Van and have the angles. That way, we saw some outstanding play from Leon Gids holding Attackers above as well with the mirror, doubled down and kept it aggressive, which, you know, was something that we said was kind of missing from the previous EG runs. But on the top floor, yeah, it's easy to kind of pull apart because the sides are windows. Lobby as well is not really a nice angle against lobby, the standard plant point, because you just get vertical anyway. So there's other bands to bring, and I think this is only really the main point where she can properly shine on. Yeah, especially if they do want to do a bathroom hold, it's kind of looking that way with the way the reinforcements have gone down because they put quite a lot of reinforcements in that bathroom area upstairs and I would expect to see at least one mirror window up there. But we do see actually the Twitch coming out from Mexican here yet again. He did bring it earlier uh, during Clubhouse a little bit. Let's have a look if it's successful here. I actually, I actually quite like a Twitch here because it, there is that drone hole that does go directly into the bathroom. And I think it could be potentially easy to get this mirror window. Yeah, and they have the option to rotate and it looks like obviously they're just going to leave it to NVK on Vigil, but not loading instantly finds Mo Digger. And from that point onwards, they're not wasting any time. Again, one of the big compliments of Shrug was the pace and they are swinging all into that. Here's the second as NVK suffers a fate and now they have all the bodies from the floors above. It's just the three anchors left and that's within the opening 30 seconds. Cracking open the wall with, well, slightly better tenacity than we've seen on a recent USN game. And now it's just a matter of finding their way inside to the point with complete piano control. However, well, this is just par for the course. Habana Charge is arguably indeed going to be doing the work, but that means that Habana Charge can't go on into deep. Um, that mirror window is not going to be able to find it in security room, but loading is going to start to do the work and just emptying bullet after bullet after bullet back into that kitchen side, but oh my god, there's just quick pink coming out here from Cloudstruck as he moves all the way back in as Rask can pick up one of his own. Necrox has it all to do here on the mute. He finds one, but doesn't find any more. Mexican finds him, it's gonna be Shrug who takes round number seven, and that is exactly what I wanted to see from them. 
aggression, it was pace, it was aggression, it was tenacity, and it was everything that we complimented them massively in the previous round because they were repeated in doing that and repeated in being able to find their way through EG players. And it just seems like at those times, EG are caught a little bit unaware and a little bit half-hearted because as we said, when they're at their best, outside of obviously what the Ash had been doing in the previous round, just running around having a fun time. It's there, set up and execute, set up and execute. It's a two-step program, the Evil Geniuses program that you can sign up for. And, well, Shrug hate waiting for that second step. And they just keep aggressively hitting the first one of push, push, push. Wow, and they're finding some pretty good results. Console, we're going to swing up to. They're not going to attempt the cafe hold again. And with the slew of information operators in Valk, Mozzie, and Maestro, I'm assuming to see a lot more mobility from their defense. Also just C4s, right? I yep. think we've seen that quite a lot from EG and from Shrug as well. You have three C4s up on the board, and it can be really, really, really powerful up onto this bottom floor defense. You also have just shit to build. You have the Deagle, you have the Super Shorty coming out from the Mozzie, and of course the main shotgun coming out from Necrox. Who, he just, I think he just loves those SAS operators because his smoke was banned. Now he's having to play the mute. Yeah. Necrox is, you know, he he can just work those uh, UK gun set. And the thing about it is you have to have belief in those guns. You do. If you don't believe in the shotgun, the SAS yeah, shotgun, it just doesn't work. I assume Necrox has a little shrine to himself and to the shotgun uh, itself. To, I was well. going to say, to himself or to the shotgun? To himself and the shotgun. Okay. And you know, he just he just praises it. And is that official EG it. merch that you can buy? I hope so. A little Necrox shrine. But we'll get into round of eight. Let's see exactly how this is going to be going down. Shrug, we're moving very aggressively and I actually really like the Dokubi pick here as well because the Dokubi could also bring smokes here. She's not going to be bringing smokes this time, but Dokubi pick I think is, is also very, very good here for the way that Shrug has been playing very aggressively, trying to get that early control and that logic bomb should be able to do just that for them. It's also a bit of a counter to Maestro and Valkyrie. Yeah, and obviously with the way that we've seen EG playing, it just kind of gives themselves a little bit more of a foot to put forward. Geo, doubling down with the Mozzie and the MVK and finding themselves with more aggression is going to be something that could play very, very big into the hands of EG at this point. It depends how dedicated they are to the cause of trying to hold the angle, hold the Roman, well, just hold Shrug at bay and keep the energy away from the Diffuser and the ability to plant it on point. In the meantime, Wrath is putting as much destruction on the board below as possible, but we've got to think this time, last time, they'd already found two bodies and well, 70% of the control of the map. So this is weirdly saying a much slower pace than we saw in the previous point, and it just shows that EG have made it that little bit harder for them. I actually really like the way that Shrug is pushing this right now, recognizing the very heavy nitro charge coming out from EG, and just purely going below and just getting that control very, very early on, allowing them to hold it down, allowing them to hold the staircases, and then go for their push on the main side. But EG is responding quite well. They've just moved every one of their roamers up above instead, and they're going to play the nitro long angles instead of that. Uh, potentially peeking this out aggressively, but actually I think this is mainly going to go start to go into the favor of Shrug right now, as they do have a lot of control. Flynn, of course, has that diffuser, and he's going to kick off with a wrath opening kill, immediately traded out by Necros Nitro. Well, that's twice in a row. Modiga has been the first body to suffer the first fate. And Necrox and Young bring some more bodies down to join him in the afterlife. NVK puts it down to a four versus one, leaving only Cloudstruck yet again. Though at least this time has more than just a Clash Shield in hand and can potentially do something with it with a minute on. And, well, EG still looming above in a menacing fashion against drop downs that have otherwise been pretty damaged you know, we find themselves in a bit of a tough fight. And this is exactly what we kind of wanted to see from EG. A bit of a response, a bit of a reaction, oh. and a bit of control. Beautiful take there against NVK in the reverse vertical play. But from this point onwards again with 30 seconds on and, well, still a huge amount to do, he's got to start making his way up those nightmarish stairs. Yeah, he's going to be in 1v3 here. Only 20 seconds left to go on the clock. He does have Zofia Charge still up. And he's going to see if anyone is at top yellow waiting for him. He's actually going to stun himself, unfortunately. And that's not looking good at all. Yeah, no utility left for remaining. Goes with some breach charges. And yeah, it's not going to end well for him at all. Evil Geniuses will take round number eight. And things looking very, very good for them indeed as they move to match point. But Shrug is still in this, I think, honestly. And I think that the next time if they attack there, if we get that far, I think they'll be able to just uh, move it out a little bit better because 
honestly, if they just, I think it was just mostly about those opening gunfights. I mean, we saw Raft get that opening pick, and generally, we tend to see whoever gets the opening pick of the round generally tends to win the round. So, it's it's kind of weird to see that they weren't able to capitalize on that opening pick, and a lot of it didn't even seem like the fact that they couldn't get in sight or anything like that, or they couldn't get control because they had that control downstairs very early on. And trying to play long angles with nitros is very, very, very difficult. The mute had already used his nitro up onto that yellow stairs, and the f I think the fact they couldn't trade that mute gave them a lot of issues there. They didn't have Doki be nade, so really there shouldn't be any reason why that couldn't have happened. Cafe and Garage, we're going to opt to swing to again. And the same lineup that we generally saw from EG before, with the mirror... Uh, potentially going to set themselves up with some Defender angles above. The only major change at this point is Vigil is gone and swapped out. I guess we'll see if MVK can make some more, well, make something work on the side of the Legion. Modiga playing the Bandit as well. You're going to assume he's going to be a bit closer to the wall and potentially a bit closer to the point. But hey, he was the first body off previously, and I guess we'll see if EG can just keep a little bit more control of what was a very swift shrug blow through the building. I mean, this was, yeah, as you just, just said, it was a very, very swift blow. He just got complete control very, very early on in the garage area. They let EG play defensively, and they just completely rolled all over them. I'm wondering, like, from EG's perspective now, because they do have three Nitros yet again up on the board. I'm assuming the Bandit has also brought the Nitro as well. Yeah, he has. So... Because of the amount of Nitro's up that they have on the board, they'll probably be able to affect a lot of this vertical play coming out from Shrek. Because last time, they had, I think it was three people taking over control of Piano, and then everyone kind of just rushed down Spiral and Yellow, and they managed to get a lot of control. Hopefully that doesn't happen this time, and VG have kind of learned what happened. But Shrek, they're already in the building. They're in the building, there's 30 seconds on at this point. Previously they had two bodies, so again, weird. It's the slower pace, but still, look at EG. They're playing this five down. They want to keep everything on the basement floor. As he said, they've got the nitro capabilities to blow themselves back upwards. They've got some of the information from the Maestro, the Mirror, and the early pops on lesions, but otherwise that is the entire wall handed over. And that is a big swing in the favor of Shrug. So they've really got to trust the back lines that EG has created on this floor to be able to hold this fight if they want to give this much land pulled themselves back into the cafeteria and pulled themselves back and they're going to watch it over with the two maestros and see if they can get the quick plant and the Yi and young is behind the mirror window as well with modiga keeping the very back flank covered and ready to rotate from archives the long long angles are being popped and they get the maestro cam out from underneath which is a very big take that's crazy he actually turned around the maestro cam as the emp had gone down he managed to save it so Really good work from Geo there, as we do see above control going into the favor of Cloudstruck. You should be able to see exactly what's going on here. Drones going deep in to the site as well. EG have completely abandoned the site, it looks like right now. It's Raf looking to try and drop down Archives, but he's going to have a man waiting for him there. But Flynn's actually going to start to plan the Diffuser, loading to Claymore finds one, but Raf is going to get taken down. It's Mexican That's trying to desperately plan this Diffuser. It is going to go down successfully, but it's all down to Flynn and Cloudstruck to bring this in. Flynn with a great pre fire is going to take one off the board, but instantly getting traded out by Geo. Cloudstruck above to try and hold onto it. And Bandit still has that Nitro available. So Cloudstruck is going to get flanked as well. Oh no, he doesn't see the Bandit as Geo goes for the counter defuse. The Bandit just trying to trick him out here. No, it's not going to work out too well at all. As Geo gets off that defuse, takes down Cloudstruck. And it's going to be EG as they take the map 7-2. Wow, that's an EG that I think we're all more familiar with seeing. And Shrug had some good moments and got the diffuser down in tight situations, but otherwise couldn't quite found or find the round swing that they did on the first map. It's a best of three, though. We're not over. We've still got one more map on the board, and it's Coastline. So expect some violence and expect some lovely Spanish music as we will head there after a couple more adverts. We'll see you very soon.
absolutely stunning! Predict the outcome, win the game. Get live coverage and schedules for your favorite tournaments. Analyze, predict, and vote to gain points. Compete with other esports fans and climb the leaderboards. Straight, everything esports. Download now on iOS and Android.